Hello and welcome to another tutorial for ArtRidge Studio Pro. Um, someone at the ArtRidge forums asked how to use the clone tool, which is a new tool that was introduced with ArtRidge 4. Uh, it's a pretty common tool uh, in many drawing programs, uh, such as Photoshop. Um, but for some of us it's new, so I'm going to go ahead and cover how to use that. Okay. So to get started, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and set up my board here uh, so that we have something to work with. And I'm going to use stickers for that. Uh, and I'm just going to drag three random stickers off my sticker sheet here for us to use. Okay. Yeah, let me flatten those out. All right, so each one of these shells is on a di it's its own layer, okay? Uh, and for the purpose of showing you those options, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this square, uh, rectangle rather, on its own layer, and then work above it on a blank layer. All right, so I have a total of five layers. Three of them have shells, one has a rectangle, and one is blank for us to work on. Alright, so I've selected the clone tool again, and I'm going to reset it to its default, okay? Uh, you just click on this uh, little triangle up here, and then select Reset Current Tool, and that will put that tool at its uh, default settings. And now I'm ready to work. Okay, so you'll notice that a lot of these features are very similar to the airbrush. Okay, so you have your blend mode with uh, all of its options you get the opacity dial which just changes how transparent your stroke is um, the hardness determines how harsh your edge is on your strokes okay so if it's really low uh, it's very uh, fuzzy on the edges go all the way up and it's a very harsh line uh, auto flow is like the airbrush as well uh, if it's off uh, it basically doesn't add any other color to the canvas while you're drawing until you pick up your pen and place it back down. With it on, it'll just constantly flow out until it's full transparency. Alright, so those are all very airbrush-like uh, settings. Uh, but there's a lot of unique settings for the clone tool, which I'm going to cover. Okay, so uh, to start, I'm going to turn auto flow off, because I prefer not to have it on. That's just my preference. You can do uh, whichever you like. And I'm going to focus on the relative offset option. Uh, the best way to explain this, I suppose, is to point it out with the uh, pen tool here. I'm going to go ahead and select red. Now, basically, I'm going to uh, point right here with my cursor. And I'm going to make that area my starting point. Okay, so that would be A. Uh, and B is going to be down here. Okay. So with my clone tool selected, I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to click in front of that shell where I pointed to before. And you can see that my cursor has now uh, placed a little dot there for us. Okay, that's my uh, my clone cursor, and that's where I'm going to be copying any information I put down. Now, if I click again with my uh, mouse here you can see I start painting and it's going to start pulling that information from up top and placing it down below. All right, And you can see that that uh, little cursor follows my main cursor everywhere I go. All right, So it's moving in relation but uh, keeping its distance to where I had set it previously. So if I start clicking and painting here it'll copy the shell above me again and the same here. Now, if I reset that position by holding Alt and clicking in front of this shell, and then painting over here, you can see I copy that shell instead. All right, so that's the way you reset it. Uh, but again, that little cursor will stay wherever I set it. Okay, it's at a set distance from my main cursor. Uh, if I turn that option off and then click in front of that uh, main shell again and then start painting again you'll see that it's basically the same. I copy that shell and that cursor follows it. But in this case if I let go of my uh, my mouse button 
you see how it snaps back into the front of that shell? Even though I'm moving my cursor around, it's not following me. And that's because uh, I have that option turned off, which means I can uh, recopy that shell anywhere I want on my canvas, and that cursor will always snap back up there. Um, and if I reset it, I can copy the other shell over the other ones again. And it, if I don't let go of the uh, mouse button, I can go ahead and copy everything that's on this page. Okay, But the second I let go, it'll snap back. Okay. Um, now our next option here is the current layer only. Now if I check that, you'll notice that these other two disappear. All right, and that's because they relate to this one. Um, so if I turn that on and then click somewhere here and try to paint, you'll notice that nothing happens. And that's because my current layer has nothing on it. I cleared it out. So let me go ahead and copy some shells down here. All right, so I have two of the shells copied for us. And let me turn that back on. So if you look at this layer, you can see that these two shells are the only thing that's on it. Everything else, the green box and these other three shells that we began with are on their own layers. If I try to copy that top shell, nothing will happen. If I try to copy the bottom shell, however, you see it works. And that's because we have it set to only copy what's on the currently selected layer and nothing else. So that's what that option does. Now if I turn that off, it'll bring the other two back. Uh, so this one here says include canvas color. Now so far, as you noticed, the white canvas has been showing up underneath our shells. So even though that these shells are on their own layers, we're still picking up the white canvas. We can choose to uh, get rid of that by turning that off there. And now if I draw, you can see that only the shell is copied. Alright. So I find that pretty useful, as I'm sure you probably do as well. And finally, we have the include current layer. With this option on, if I start painting, you'll see that it, uh, it's duplicating the shells I just duplicated. Alright. And those are on the same layer I'm working on right now. All right, so now I have six shells on this layer. If I turn that off and start coloring, you'll see that I only pick up the green box. It's uh, neglecting to pull up the shells. All right, so now it's not including the information that's on my current layer, only information that's on other layers. So it won't get that shell. But if I click up here and start cloning, it'll pull up that shell because it's not currently on this layer. All right, uh, so that's basically what all the clone options do. Uh, so what do we do with this information? Well, I'm going to show you uh, using an example I've set up for it. OK, um, so here's the image I've set up for you. Uh, and as you can see, it's just a tin uh, with a text over it. Now, that text is part of that layer, all right? Uh, so the only way I'm going to get rid of it is if I somehow cover it. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer to work on. Uh, I'm going to go over to my settings for the clone tool, and I'm going to keep relative offset on. Uh, I'm going to have the canvas color off and include the current layer I'll leave on. And what I'm going to do is you can see that this box has some horizontal lines going across it. I'm going to click right above that line. All right. So I've just set my clone point right here. And then where the text starts, right above that line again, I'm going to start drawing. And you can see how I'm cloning that horizontal line over the uh, other area so that it looks like it's part of that box that had been there previously. Alright, so you see that 
because I have the relative set up, it's going to stay with that line no matter where my cursor moves. And I can just copy straight over it. And as you can see, I have now effectively covered the text by cloning. Alright, so I just took the information that was already existing over here uh, and placed it over there. And because it blends in so well, it looks like it was always there. Okay, so here's another example of a surfer on a wave. This works pretty much the same way. I would basically just pick a point on my wave that matches what I think would uh, be behind that surfer and then start to fill that information in with the information from the other side of the wave. Alright, and I'm doing this kind of sloppily. Uh, you know, you'd obviously want to spend a lot of time refining things, making sure that everything doesn't look too out of the ordinary. But uh, just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm keeping it short. So there you go. No more surfer. Okay. So uh, that's how you'd use the clone tool.